Well, there's more to my story. In 1994, at age 60, in my company's 22nd year, I experienced something totally unexpected and unprecedented. We began to hear a new and recurring question from our customers, especially architects and interior designers, a question we had never heard before. What is your company doing for the environment? And we had no good answers. So to address this disturbing question, we formed a new environmental task force at Interface. It's purpose to frame some answers. What were we doing for the environment? The organizers of the task force insisted that I should launch the new task force with a kickoff speech and give the task force my environmental vision. Well, I did not have an environmental vision. In all of my working life, 38 years at that time, I had never given one thought to the environment. What we were taking from the earth, except to be sure there was always enough of it coming through to keep our factories running, or what we were doing to the biosphere and the making of our products, except, of course, to obey the law, to comply. So I hemmed and I hawed and I dragged my feet, but they stayed on my case. Finally, I relented. I agreed to speak. The date was set, August 31, 1994. Come the middle of August, I am sweating. <laughs> I have not a clue as to what to say. I cannot get beyond we obey the law, comply. But I somehow knew that that was not a vision. <laughs> it's a propitious moment. And at that very moment, so help me goodness, by pure serendipity, a book lands on my desk. It is The Ecology of Commerce by Paul Hawking. I had never heard of Paul Hawking. I don't know what this book's about. I pick it up, I begin to thumb it the way you would do. On page 19, I came to a chapter heading, The Death of Birth. The Death of Birth, whoa. And I began to read, and by page 25, it is a spear in my chest, an epiphanal experience. Hawkins' central point is in three parts. One, the living systems and the life support systems of Earth are in decline. We humans are degrading the biosphere. If the, if the decline goes on and on and on and on unchecked, we, that is our descendants, will lose the biosphere, the livability of the Earth. And two, the biggest culprit in this decline according to Paul Hawken, is the industrial system, this linear take-make-waste industrial system, digging up the earth, converting it to products that quickly end up as waste in landfills and incinerators. And he goes on to say, the only institution on earth that is large enough and powerful enough and pervasive enough and wealthy enough to really change that and lead humankind out of this mess it's making is the same institution that's doing the greatest damage the institution of business and industry, my institution. I was convicted there and then, there and then as a plunderer of the earth, and I thought to myself, my God, someday people like me will go to jail for theft, theft of their grandchildren's future. I took Hawkins seriously, and I made that kickoff speech with almost more vision than I could handle. <laughs> And I challenge that tiny task force to lead our company to sustainability and beyond to make Interface a restorative company. I just stunned them. And it amazed me, this whole new challenge in my 61st year. I simply said, if Hogan is right in business and industry must lead, who will lead business and industry? Unless somebody leads, nobody will. You know, that's axiomatic. So why not us? Well, they accepted the challenge, and I found a whole new purpose in life, and for more than 14 years now, I have been a recovering plunderer. <laughs> and the 3,100 people of Interface are a daily part of that recovery. So how are we, one petro-intensive company, climbing this mountain, Mount Sustainability? I can tell you that the first decision was mine to determine that we are going to climb it and to articulate this BHAG, this big, hairy, audacious goal, as a vision for my company. And even when many people thought I had gone round the bend to stay on message consistently and 
persistently year after year after year, and secondly, to put the right people in the right roles and empower them to make it happen. But the most important decision was made collectively by the people of Interface, one mind at a time, to embrace this challenging vision. We began where we were in 1994. Doesn't everybody begin where they are with a schematic showing all of the connections or linkages between Interface and the Earth? its lithosphere and its biosphere directly through our people, our suppliers, our customers, and